everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is another special one because the quality of this firearm is just off the scale. And I have reviewed another AR from this amazing company. Today we're looking at the Nemo Arms Battle Light Rifle, but this one is chambered in six arc. Yeah, a caliber that I was completely unaware of. And we're gonna talk about that caliber in just a second. But I wanna talk about what this rifle is this is a longer distance precision ar-15 style rifle and as i mentioned it's chambered in six arc now i had not heard of this caliber before but let me show you what it looks like and this is a caliber that is designed for long range flat trajectory out to 1000 yards but because of its size it fits into the receiver of an ar-15 instead of of an AR-10, therefore making this rifle a lot lighter. So the whole point of this is to have a cartridge that is ballistically very flat shooting, has great penetration at long distances, but fits into a standard AR-15 receiver. And Nemo has constructed a rifle for that cartridge and for its performance. So I'm really excited to get a chance to shoot this. But this also has to bring up another thing I need to talk to you about, the caveats or the disclaimers. Now, one of the things that some people, I guess, rightfully can criticize me about is on some guns, I don't use them to their full extent. So for example, if I'm shooting a gun like this, I'm not gonna go to a thousand yard range. And there's many other great reviewers out there that if you're looking for a review of this rifle out on a thousand yard range, looking for people doing mile long shots, yeah, it's just not me. I'm an average gun guy, and I review these guns as they come into the channel from that perspective. And I want to say that not everybody that either can afford or wants this gun has the option of shooting on a thousand yard range. So I like to just take these to my local range that have 25 and 100 yard distances, and I just want to get them out and enjoy them. I review them for their function and their quality, their ergonomics, and just the fun factor. And so if you're looking for a true test of this rifle out to a thousand yards, just go ahead and click away. I'm only going to disappoint you and you don't have to make fun of me in the comments. I'm just gonna review this, as I said, as an average gun guy. So with those disclaimers out of the way, I always wanna thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this amazing pistol who lent it to the channel, my good friend D. And once again, he has lent a gem of a firearm. So thank you, D. I always wanna thank my Patreons as always because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on around here and that means a lot to me if you guys want to be a patreon supporter of the texas gun vault you can join for as little as one dollar a month there's a link in the description below and as always i want to thank my sponsor for every one of these range reports because he does so much for my channel my good friend mark from brownworks and as I always say, when you come to my channel and I'm reviewing a top-notch gun like this, well, you probably own amazing firearms that are beautiful and you're looking for something that is custom, special, and unique. And I have the perfect grip company for you. So if you're in the market for wood panel grips, you all need to go check out Brownworks. Brownworks is a company that makes some of the finest wood panel grips out of a wide variety of exotic woods and materials, putting on custom logos and engravings and all different types of custom artwork and designs. Mark over there is constantly innovating. He is creating grips that no other companies are making, such as grips for AR-15 style rifles. I know what you're thinking, wood grips for AR-15s? Well, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, it might be yours, and if you want people to come up to you at the range and be like, what the heck is that? That's freaking awesome. Well, Brownworks is a company that can set you up with these awesome grips. So I'm gonna put a link in the comment section below. Please go over there, check out, and see what Mark has to offer. And he's always more busy making grips for his customers than he is updating his website. So if you don't see what you're looking for, make sure to contact Mark. Thank him for supporting me here at the Texas Gun Vault and tell him Jason from the Texas Gun Vault sent you. 
All right, so I've already spoken enough about the disclaimers. Let's get into the things that I like and don't like about this rifle. And I gotta say, as always, there's a lot of things about this gun I like. I've reviewed a Nemo before and really fell in love with it. It was a great firearm to shoot. And many of the things that I like about this gun and don't like are probably about the same. So let's go ahead and talk about those. First, it's a Nemo. If you guys don't know about Nemo arms, you need to go check them out. They make really fine AR-15s and their builds look like nobody else's. Yeah, take a look at that. What an awesome color as well. I love the fact that they can finish these in a number of different ways. They just have such a stellar reputation. Another thing I really like about this is their choice of furniture. Being that this is a precision rifle build going with this awesome Magpul stock with all the different adjustments, it is great. You can customize this to your body. It has so much going on, especially for a fixed stock. It makes it really solid, and I'm a big fan of the upgraded Magpul grip. This just isn't their standard MOE grip. This is the MIAD grip, so it has all the different modular panels to really conform to your hand. So I love their choice of furniture. I've also mentioned already that I really like the fact that this is an AR-15 style receiver and not an AR-10 style receiver. Now, I like AR-10s and I like shooting full power rifle cartridges through ARs. However, AR-10s can kind of get heavy and having an AR-15 upper and lower receiver, it really cuts down on the weight. But in this caliber of six arc, you get amazing ballistics, honestly, ballistics that you would normally get out of an AR-10. So I absolutely love that. That is fantastic. And I like how they thought about that caliber and put it into a rifle like this. So now let's talk about a couple of things about this rifle that I don't like. And honestly, it's the same as the other AR of theirs that I reviewed. And that is this handguard. Now this handguard, I have to say, is machined beautifully. It doesn't have any machine marks whatsoever. But let me tell you, this thing is wide. It's really big. You know, fads come and go in the world of firearms, and for a long time, people always wanted quad rails, and people complained, those are too thick. You need to go with something that has M-Lock or key mod when that was a thing. And then we had these ultra slim rails. Everybody wanted that. And now, the kind of medium-sized ones are back in style, but man, does Nemo go with a gigantic handguard. It's honestly a little bit too big. Now, we do have all these M-Lock slots on the side. So if you're going to add accessories, it even adds to that width, the, to that dimension. It really makes it kind of beefy. Now, it definitely makes the platform very solid, but if you're going to shoot like 5.56 five, through this, I honestly think it's a little bit too big, and that was my complaint with the other rifle. The last thing that I don't like is something that I guess is kind of a personal choice. While this receiver set is absolutely beautiful, you can see all the machining on there. It looks really cool. Space Age, you got all those lightning cuts on it. I am not a fan of billet receivers. I've just had issues with them being in spec in the past. Now, I'm 100% sure this one is in spec. I guess I just like forged receivers. I like the look of forged receivers. And I like the durability of forged receivers. Now, I know that Nemo makes an amazing product, but for me personally, I just prefer forged over billet. Now, that's not something that's really gonna change the performance of this gun. As I said, it's more of a qualitative thing. It's more of just me liking what I like, but I'm here to tell you the truth and what I like and don't like. And honestly, those are the only two things about this gun that I would really nitpick about. So let's go ahead and get this thing to the range. Now, we're gonna start off at some pretty short distances, but don't worry, we're gonna go to the 100 yard range eventually. So we're gonna start off first at just about 15 yards. I wanna make sure this gun cycles, what the recoil is like, and what the trigger feels like. I have never shot six arc before, so honestly, I have no idea what to expect. I don't know if it's a hard hitting round, a soft hitting round. I have no idea. I don't know what this trigger is going to be like. I just want to put a few rounds down range at a shorter distance just to kind of see how the rifle performs and then we'll go from there. So here's two magazines and my first shots and impressions.
And as expected, the gun ran great. Now, I was really surprised by how light recoiling this was. It has a pretty high tone as well. I wasn't expecting that. So I really feel like after this, I had to go put on some double hearing protection. So normally I'm just running my earmuffs. I actually went back and put in some earplugs as well. The pitch was just really high. I know that doesn't come across on the camera, but it was really loud and high pitched. Now, D, who owns this rifle, says he always shoots it suppressed. So I'm 100% sure running a suppressor on this is something that would be really advantageous if you're gonna shoot this for a longer period of time because this muzzle break up here does a fantastic job. It doesn't have any flash whatsoever, but man, is it loud and that pitch is kind of high. Now, the one thing that really surprised me about this was this trigger. This trigger that comes in this is stock. And let me tell you, it is really, really light. It really did surprise me. And when it comes to the reset, there really is no audible or tactile reset. Well, I guess there is to a little bit, and maybe I should go ahead and show you here. Let me go ahead and, of course, safety check the firearm. I'll ensure that there's no ammunition in the gun, and we are clear. So let me go ahead and show you this trigger. Let me get this on camera here. And so here is the initial trigger pull. Look at that little take up. And let me tell you, this is a very light pull. There it is. Let's reset this. That is it. Now that is pretty darn awesome, especially if you like really short resets. It's almost honestly too short. And that reset, the tactile response is simply too light. There's almost no take up whatsoever. So you're right back at the wall and the trigger pull is so light I hate to say it, this trigger actually might be a little bit dangerous. I know, that's not a word that I throw around flippantly at all. I really feel like if you're taking your time, if you're a little bit anxious, a little bit jittery, and you're trying to stage that trigger, you might actually have a negligent discharge before you're ready to shoot the rifle. That is a really light trigger pull and has almost no take up whatsoever. I really don't feel like I can stage that trigger really well. Well, now I'm going to set up the target at 25 yards. Yes, we're still at the 25 yard range. Don't worry, we're going to get to the 100 yard range. I just got to work my way out, but I am going to bench rest this. And of course, I want to test the accuracy. And of course, at 25 yards, I'm going to expect to shoot this thing through the same hole one after another. So let me bench rest this at 25. I really want to test out this trigger before I go to longer distances. So let's see what happens.
Now this is where I think this gun is going to shine. Bench resting or using some type of bipod. The weight and balance of this is perfect. And with the low recoil, it is such a great gun just to sit down at the shooting table and use. And obviously, it pretty much puts the rounds through the same hole at this distance, which is exactly what I would expect. Now spending a little bit more time on this trigger, I am gonna double down on what I was saying. I really do think it's honestly a little bit dangerous. I either want a little bit more take up in this trigger or I want the wall and the brake to be a little bit heavier. It just helps me stage it a little bit more. I'm not 100% confident on where that trigger is going to break. It is definitely not the same feel as a Geisley trigger or a Target trigger and it's definitely a world apart from a mil spec trigger. It is just super short and super light and if you're not used to that and honestly, I'm really not because I shoot more tactical mil spec type of firearms. It's a little bit scary. Not that I'm expecting the gun to go boom and hurt me or anything, but I'm really kind of nervous and anxious because I don't want to shoot before I'm ready. All right, so now let's go out to the 100 yard range and I'm going to work this target out. I'm going to start out at 50 yards because now I have to sight in this scope. So let's go ahead and put some more rounds down range. Let's go out to 50 yards and once again, I'm expecting exceptional accuracy. Then we'll go to 75 and finally 100. So let's see what this thing does at 50 and get this scope zeroed. And that is exactly the performance that I want to see out of this rifle. Now, obviously it's shooting kind of high, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this amazing Night Force scope down a little bit. And we're gonna put some more rounds down range at 75 yards. So this gun is great for this type of application. It has absolutely no recoil. And it's kind of a weird disconnect because the sound and the concussion of this rifle and the felt recoil are just two different planes of existences. It's really interesting. This is a very very awesome caliber. I'm very excited to get some time on it and to experience it because it is so different. So now let's set up the target at 75 yards, do exactly the same thing, and then we'll go to 100.
And that's what I would expect from a Night Force scope. I know this is not a review of these Night Force scopes, but D has an amazing collection of these. I am always blown away by their performance and clarity. And so this thing is now right on target for the ranges that I am shooting at. All right, so now let's go out to 100 yards and I'm gonna go through three magazines here on the top three targets and just see how this thing shoots. Now, as I said, I know some people are gonna laugh and say, this rifle's designed for five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred, or even a thousand yards. You're wasting your time, and that is perfectly fine if you have that opinion. But remember, not everybody that buys this rifle is going to shoot it like that. They just may want it because it's awesome and they're gonna go down to their local range where they can only shoot 100 or maybe 150 yards and they can still enjoy it and that's what this review is about. So here we go, 30 rounds on three different targets at 100 yards. I like shooting this rifle. So let's have some fun with it.
And as you can see from those results, this rifle is great. It's exceptionally accurate and I have enjoyed shooting it. And this is normally not the type of gun that I enjoy shooting. I'm not really a precision shooter. I'm not a long distance shooter. I like more of the close up CQB type of stuff with the tactical firearms. But this gun has so much going for it. And the most important part of that is the fun factor. Yeah, this gun is so much fun. It really wanted to keep me at the range. I just kept wanting to put more magazines through this thing because it's so accurate, the recoil is so light, and I'm really fascinated by the six arc such a different cartridge and i like the philosophy of this cartridge now i'm not a ballistician so i can't tell you about all the different specs about it it's just interesting and unique and if you guys are interested in this cartridge go look it up online i don't know if it's the right cartridge for everybody but i think for some people in certain applications it's really good so what are my final thoughts on the Nemo Battle Light Rifle Chambered in 6 Arc? Man, it's just one well-built firearm. And for what it is designed to do, it does the job exceptionally. I have a few issues with it, but it's the same ones you already know. Big old wide handguard. I don't think it needs to be that wide. And of course, the trigger. It is just too light for me. Now, I know you want a really light, short resetting trigger for a precision rifle, but for me, it's honestly too light. I kind of feel like if I was going to introduce somebody to rifle shooting and longer distance shooting, I would not have them start on this if they're not used to triggers that are that light. But of course, this all depends on what you like, your preferences, and what you train on. So this could be the most amazing trigger for you. For me, I want something just slightly heavier with a little bit more take up so I can stage that trigger. But that's just the type of shooter that I am. So on my star system, how would I rate this amazing AR-15 chambered and six arc, well, I'm gonna give it 4.75 stars out of five, almost perfect. The only reason I deduct that one quarter of a point is the trigger, and that's honestly it. I can get over the handguard and its size. I absolutely love all the different finishes they have for it. They're absolutely gorgeous, well-built, high-quality rifles, and if you go to their website, they have rifles built for different types of applications. And I know, or I'm sure, each one of these is the same exceptional quality. And it's going to do their job just as advertised. I have just been blown away with Nemo Arms quality. So 4.75 stars, Nemo Battle Light Rifle and 6 Arc. So tell me in the comments, what do you guys think? Have you ever fired a firearm chambered in six arc? If so, what do you think? And do you guys do really long distance shooting? And is this the type of rifle that you would enjoy having for those types of applications? I'm just an average gun guy. That's not the type of shooting that I do. And it's fine if you wanna make fun of me in this review for that. But I just enjoy shooting awesome firearms. This is an awesome firearm. I like shooting fun firearms, and this is a fun firearm. So I personally had a blast. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.